Hey guys, welcome back to Callie and Beans Books. I'm Brittany and today I'm going to be doing my Owls Readathon wrap up for you guys. So to kind of overview the Owls Readathon, you pick a career, you have your classes that have prompts for the books you read, and then if you read all the books, then you complete your Owls and then you can pursue that career. That's the overview of it. I'll be sure to link the original video in the description below as well as my TBR video and Callie Ann Bean's TBRs as well. So I pursued Magic Zoologist as well as my dragon taming training. And then on the side, I also pursued being a journalist. So I had a total of eight classes or eight prompts and that meant eight books. This is the most ambitious TBR I've ever had and I did it. I'm pretty proud of myself. That's a lot of books, it's a lot of reading. I also listen to a lot of audiobooks, so that's kind of how I made it through all of my books, but either way, I got it done. So I started with Spin the Dawn by Elizabeth Lim. This was for my Care of Magical Creatures class. This year we studied hippogriffs, so I had to pick a book with a beak on the cover. There's a bird with beak right there. So um, this has been on my TBR since October, since I borrowed it from Callison. And that is mostly why I chose this book for this prompt, it's just because I finally wanted to read it and finally got the chance to. Overall, this is about Maya, who um, grew up with her father being a master tailor in a country that doesn't allow women to be master tailors. So when the emperor calls for a trial of tailors to be his personal tailor, she impersonates her brother who returned from the war crippled and has no talent whatsoever in tailing to take his place. And then there's magic too. Um, one thing that it is a little confusing is the magic system because there's a couple of different elements to it. Overall, I did give the book a four out of five just because I really did enjoy the story itself and everything around it but the magic was a little confusing. So next I picked up Muse of Nightmares by Lainey Taylor for my herbology class. We were studying Mimbulus and Mimbletonia, so the, the book title had to start with the letter M. It's been sitting on my TBR shelf as well for a couple of months. We read Strange the Dreamer, which is the first of this duology, in January, I believe, for our Serpent and Badger book club, and I was pretty upset at the ending of that book, so I kind of put off Muse of Nightmares, but every question I had answered in this, and one reason I really enjoyed this story was we're getting the answers to the questions that the characters have at the same time, so everything's kind of unraveling for us with the characters and following along, and I really enjoyed it. It is a very thick story, very immersive. That writing style carried out through Change the Dreamer did come into play in Muse of Nightmares as well. Uh, so we have a very immersive story and I wish there was more of it. It was kind of an open ending that hinted that maybe we'll get more in the future, but it's been a couple years since this book was released and there's nothing. So I'm just going to sit here and cross my fingers, maybe in the future for more. So the next book I picked up was Stormrise by Julian Boehm. This I read for my dragon taming training course, which we had to read a book based on dragons. And overall, I gave this a three and a half out of five. In the story, we follow Rain, who is disguising herself as a man to fight in the war to protect her brother and her father. So it's very similar to Milan, but that's pretty much where the similarities stop. She is using a powder made from dragon magic to help disguise herself. With that powder, it awakens the power of the dragons, which is believed to have gone extinct a couple hundred years ago. And there's parts of the country that believe that the dragons will come back. And there's other parts of the country that believe the dragons are just a myth that have been passed down and twisted into just bedtime stories for their children. So Rain is very hesitant when this dragon boy starts talking to her. She's not sure if this is an illusion or if she's going crazy, um, but eventually she kind of gives in and helps awaken the dragons in full. And we follow her as she's training in the army and um, trying to navigate her new life. It's intense and I actually really enjoyed it. Even though it is predictable, it was enjoyable at the same time. I really loved the uniqueness of the way the dragon was introduced. I liked the banter between some of the characters. Even though there were portrayals, in the end everything worked out and even the romance had a happy ending, which you don't see coming in a way, 
So overall, I do recommend this book if you're looking for a quick read that's similar to Milan, but not necessarily exactly the same story. So the next book I picked up was for my History of Magic class. The prompt was reading a book about witches. I chose The Wicked Deep by Shay Earnshaw. This follows um, kind of a dual timeline. We're following three sisters who were sentenced to death for witchery in the 1800s. And um, since then, there's a curse on this town where every year on the anniversary of the sister's death their spirits come on to shore and they take over the bodies of three young women in the town and they kill three men or three boys. Typically it's three, sometimes there's more, um, and it's turned into a large tourist attraction as well. We follow Penny who doesn't necessarily believe in it but she still wants to protect her friends and the new boy in town Bo who arrives mysteriously and we follow her throughout the summer and this story is actually really good I was a little nervous going into it just because like the with the dual timeline it was a little hard to follow at first but I really did enjoy it it was very interesting there were predictable moments but as soon as you thought that that's how the story was going to go, a couple chapters later, it slapped you in the face and was like, ha, you're wrong. I did really enjoy how the characters developed throughout the story, the reveals, and the intense moments. Overall, I did give the story a 4 out of 5. I really enjoyed the writing style as well, and so I look forward to reading Shay Earnshaw's newer release, uh, Winterwood. I'll probably read that in October because it's still witchy in October which is Halloween, so that's probably when I'll read it. So the next book I picked up was Don't Read the Comments by Eric Smith. This was for my Muggle Studies class. We had to read a book in the perspective of a Muggle, which was contemporary, basically. Overall, I gave this a three out of five. This was definitely the most disappointing book for me for the month of April. One thing I didn't like about it was the dialogue between the characters. There was some where it was just cringy and I was rolling my eyes and I was like, this is kind of stupid. Overall, it was one that I was looking forward to, but it just kind of fell short. It made me realize that maybe I've grown out of the genre of contemporary in general. I've been reading a lot more adult romance, but that's also because I can connect with the characters more. When I'm reading contemporary, I just feel like I can't connect to the characters and what they're going through anymore just because they're mostly in high school. In this story, we're following Diva, who is a gamer. Um, she actually has a glitch stream account, very similar to Twitch. And she has a very large following, but during one of the gaming sessions, she is uh, destroyed by another group of gamers because she is a woman trying to make it in the streaming community, and they didn't like that. So she makes it her mission throughout the story to take down and reveal this group of men. And then the other character that we follow is Aaron, who works with his parents. His mom is a doctor and has an in-home practice, and she wants him to follow in her footsteps, go to med medical school, and then one day take over the practice. He doesn't want to. He actually wants to go into art school. He wants to go into game development, and they don't really see eye to eye, so he spends the summer trying to convince her that that's what he wants to do and through the game that's when they meet so they meet virtually and they start a friendship start a relationship and eventually diva's hacked and she's shut out of all of her accounts so she can't get in touch with aaron anymore and he makes it his mission as well to start taking down the same group of people at this gaming conference and overall some of the conversations that they were having some of the events that happened i was just like it's kind of stupid. If I'm going to be completely honest, I really didn't enjoy this book. The only thing that I enjoyed was the banter between the friend groups and the ending was pretty nice. It wrapped up pretty nicely, but overall I was just really disappointed. I had higher expectations for this story. The next book I picked up was for my Defense Against the Dark Arts class and we were studying Grinolos, so I had to pick a book that was based on the sea or the coast. So I chose All the Stars and Teeth by Adeline Grace. And I love this story. I gave it a four and a half out of five. I read this super quickly just because I loved the story. So we follow Amora and she is the princess to Visidia and she has to master her soul magic and perform her magic in front of her people so they trust her so she can 
take over her when her father steps down from the throne and it goes horribly horribly wrong because the soul magic it pretty much it's a very violent magic she has to use bones and blood of the victim to take over their soul and pretty much kill them from the inside out like i said it's very violent the demonstration goes horribly wrong she has to escape her island because she is under the impression that they are either going to kill her or exile her and she wants another chance to prove that she does have control of her magic and so when a pirate shows up to take her on this adventure and show her that she can control her magic she accepts it there are a couple of other magic systems in the story within the island system each island has their own magic that they control which is really interesting there's one island that's been exiled that that's where they have to go because they have this law that you can only study one magic. You're not allowed to practice other magics outside the one that you choose when you're growing up. And there's a group of people that are trying to master soul magic, which Amora is under the impression that only her family is allowed to control. Part of the adventure is going and trying to uncover this group of people and destroy them so that she can bring peace to the islands and everything hits the fan when she goes to do this she goes to the island with curse magic and the person that is in charge of this group that's trying to take over the islands has blended curse magic and soul magic into this i don't know how to say it into this monster that can be used for good but it's also being used for evil so she has to go through and try to end this guy but that also backfires and the only reason I couldn't give this a 5 out of 5 was because I felt the ending was drawn out a little bit. This is the first in a series, so I understand wanting to answer as many questions as possible leading up to the final act in this book to start the second one. There was a moment where they're sailing and everything kind of came together from the story. There's a lot of emotions that are released and Amora's coming to terms with what happened that I felt like, okay, this is a nice ending. And then there's 60 more pages. So it was nice to kind of get that big bad confrontation, but I also felt like we could have waited and gotten that for the opening of the second one. But realistically, we're getting into nitpicking of how an author decided to end their story. So overall, I did really enjoy this. I will probably reread this again next year right before the release of the sequel. So the next book I picked up was Nevernight by Jay Kristoff. This was for my charms class where we were studying Lumos Maxima, so we had to pick a book with a white cover, mostly white, so it counts. This is the Serpent and Badger book club book of April. This was Sarah's pick. I'm not gonna go into too much detail on Nevernight just because we will get together eventually, keyword eventually, to discuss it as a group and we will also be discussing it on our book club page which is hosted on Goodreads. That link will be in the description below. Overall, I gave this a 4 out of 5. I really did enjoy this. This isn't an adult fantasy. I was really nervous going into it just because there's a lot of blood, guts, and gore and I'm not one that usually reads books like that or watches movies with it. It's just not my cup of tea normally. But I did really enjoy the story. There was a lot more to the characters than just them training to be deadly assassins. And that was one thing that I really did enjoy was the banter and the character development, the character relationships. We follow Mia who is training to be this assassin and we go through her point of view that she knows that it's not going to be easy, but it's harder than she thought it was going to be. And not just with the training, but the relationships she's developing too. Which she knows that she shouldn't be developing relationships because she's not sure if these people are going to survive. And in the end, only four make it into the roles of assassin in this church that she's trying to be a part of. So it's... It's pretty intense. This is the first in the trilogy and I do plan on continuing it. It just might be a while until I pick up God's Grave because it's a lot to read. <laughs> but overall, like I said, I did enjoy the story. Last book I picked up for my Owls Readathon was Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them by Newt Scamander. This was for my potions class. We were studying the shrinking potion, so we had to read a book less than 150 pages. This is a very short and cute book. This is about 100 or so pages, 
and it breaks down pretty much every Fantastic Beast in the world of Harry Potter. We go from A to Z on all the magical beasts and there's a rating on how dangerous they are. We get a little bit more history on merfolk and centaurs as well, which was really fun. And it's written like it's a textbook. So that's one thing that was really nice too. And even in the beginning, there's a little like footnotes and saying like, we have to take this part out for release for muggles. And it's it was really interesting and I really enjoyed it. I gave it a five out of five. It was a nice way to end my month of April reading. All right guys, that's it. I made it through all eight of my books. I'm very proud of myself. I completed my owls. I probably will do my newts this summer. I'm not sure yet. I might wait and just do it next year. I don't know, we'll see. Overall, I did enjoy doing my owls. I thought it was just gonna be this daunting task. That's why I wasn't sure if I was going to do it. And then I looked into it and I was like, okay, this is actually kind of fun. So I'm happy that I participated this year. So I'd love to hear what you guys read for the month of April, whether you guys did your owls or not. Just drop a comment below and I will get back to you as soon as I can. Be sure to head over to our channel and subscribe and click that little bell icon. We post new videos every Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday. And head over to Goodreads, our individual and book club links will be below, as well as our individual and joint Instagrams. Until next time, guys. Bye!